The Morning Brew Podcast with Jaffe and Razor, sponsored by Berkshire Bank Home Lending. Where you borrow matters. I'm going to guess that uh, this game that the Boston Bruins lost to the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs for a final score of 6-4 to four, is going to be looked at quite differently from the lens of each opponent. <laughs> I'm going to guess Toronto Maple Leafs are going to feel pretty good about their game, and the Boston Bruins are going to say, holy smokes, we didn't really show up. As we welcome you into Morning Brew with Jaffe and Razor, post-game, from, again, the Toronto Maple Leafs 6-4 victory over the Bruins at TD Garden. As always, uh, presented by our lead sponsor, Berkshire Bank. We'll talk about a few other partners later in the show. Razor, um, that was not, I mean, from our Bruins perspective, not pretty. Not not uh, not pretty at all. You know, 6-4, the score, not as close as I think the score indicates. But completely sloppy and ineffective. And it's, it's not that I don't want to give the Leafs credit. I, I, because I tell you what, offensively, holy shit, I'll give them credit, man. I will when they take pucks to the net and, you know, zip it around. But the best thing that they did is that they, I felt that they were incredibly opportunistic with the opportunities given to them by the Bruins' completely ineffective ability at times to, to manage the puck uh, after a couple of first good minutes of the game. Then, then that was about it. Agreed. And and you, you, we pull away from the set and we drive home and you think about it a little more. And, and it, you know, I, I was talking to people in Toronto today and they're asking and questioning, do the Bruins, does Lindholm put them over the top with their back end? And do they have enough on their back end? And, and I thought so. And then you, you give up six goals and you don't manage the puck well. And two or three of the goals are directly on the defense, not managing the puck well. And um, you start to think and you start to to wonder, do they and you don't think of, I didn't expect it. But but did they manage the puck well enough against these good teams on the back end? Well, they do against Tampa the other day. Yep, sure as hell did. They didn't hear. I, I find this, I, you know, again, I want to put this out there. I'll, I, I read a quote post game from Colin Blackwell, one, uh, one of the newest Toronto Maple Leafs required from Seattle. He said, quote, it felt like a playoff game. Did you feel it, like it felt like no. a playoff game? Yeah, I don't believe that. And it, it might have been the Leafs dressing room, but it definitely didn't in the building. It didn't look like it on the ice. And if, if that's game one of the Stanley Cup playoffs, then um, I probably won't be watching by round two. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like there was the there wasn't any intensity, and and you could feel that from up top. It, it was a Tuesday night game, and that I, I think that's also disappointing. Um, I, I think we mm-hmm. can be honest with that. It, it would have loved to have seen a three. I'm jealous of everyone who was in Tampa who saw a four three overtime game between Tampa and Carolina. I, mm-hmm. I that I wanted that's what I wanted tonight and and it was far from it. And that's that's a product of the schedule and the 82 games and it just didn't the timing didn't line up well for either of these teams. But but again, I think Toronto's going to look at it and say, "Hold on a second. You Boston homas you know, that's what they're going to say. Look at the way that we play. We we were good in the neutral zone. They were. They were in the right positions. I thought they were structured in the offense, in their uh, D zone, I mean. Didn't let the Bruins really get offensively generating much stuff. You brought up later in the game, there was a shift in the third period. I don't remember the minute mark, but it was mid-late where Toronto was cycling and moving. And you said to me, you know, the Nesson studio, inside TD Garden, you said, that's really the first sustained offensive zone shift we've seen from either team yeah. in this game. And it was, I think it was accurate. But Toronto was pretty damn, 
good. I mean, their acceleration evident. Boy, did they turn guys like Carlo and Grizz, Clifton, who started out actually good. We clipped a few good plays early on, and then that that wasn't even a pizza. That first pass to nowhere on the first the first goal. I mean, take it behind the net. Jeez. Right. Just exactly. Take it behind the net there and settle it down. And then it leads to the Blackwell goal with a, a easy tip in. And anyways, I, I just think of this game would, will, will be viewed completely different by the people in Ontario, or I'm saying Toronto fans, and the people in Boston, the Bruins fans. Um, there was some, there were a couple of injuries. Justin Hall got injured, but he was cut. Mrazic gets injured. Holy smokes, what does what does Toronto do for their goaltending if, 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 Campbell can't come back. He's practicing right now. He should be very close. I think they said this week he could play. But you're not going to go anywhere with the kid Shalgren as your starter. What a miserable year for, for uh, Morazic. And then the, the kid Labushkin, the big guy, the big defenseman who's been pretty good for them, goes down after them. The hit from behind on Taylor Hall that wasn't called a penalty, I I'm, I was okay without being called a penalty. Brick said that on the air too. You know, he yeah. said it. We we both said it. Taylor may have turned a bit. I mean, I mean, okay. But then Hall gave him a little something from behind, and then he was out. Like never came back. I've looked at it and looked at it. I can't figure it out. Can you? No, it didn't. It didn't look. It didn't look dangerous by any means. And and so. You wonder if how he fell weird or because it wasn't precautionary because the defense they, they'd already lost another defenseman like you talked right. about in Hall. So so you don't go down to four defensemen if it's just precautionary reasons. So um it, it, weird, just just kind of odd. Uh but didn't didn't feel didn't feel terrible. We see those that play happen once a game somewhere. <laughs> I saw somebody in Toronto just quickly checking the, the the social media verse. One of the shows up there putting out one of those, I think it was a Twitter poll about, you know, suspension, <laughs> fine, or nothing for the Taylor Hall hit. Marshy would have got suspended probably, or you get fined, but no one else in the league is. Exactly. I just, you know, I, I, I'm. Anyways, the good news, I guess, is. Again, a report. Morgan Riley uh, spoke to Labushkin after the game, and the quote is, quote, he seems like he's going to be okay. That's good. I've looked at it four times. I can't figure out. I mean, he gets hit kind of in the side of the face. I thought maybe he got a finger in the eye, like, or his shield did something. I thought, but he also grabbed the back of his head, but yet the his head didn't, I don't know. A anyways, I, I hope I hope he's okay. But that was about, I mean, it, the, the Bruins did a little this, a little that. But otherwise, what do we take out of this game, Razor? And, I mean, besides wanting to burn the uh, proverbial tape, is there anything else that we take out of it? I'm not, I don't think so. And and, and that's disappointing. I, I would have, it feels different than them getting run out of the building by Carolina at 6-1. to one. Uh, It feels different than the Rangers coming back on them and losing that afternoon game five to three, I think it was, uh, it just, there were, there wasn't enough. And, and I, I would rather have it been the Maple Leafs just dominated down low. And I guess we haven't seen the Leafs in the building in so long either. Right. So it's a, it's mm -hmm. a different vibe, but the last time they were there, I think about the playoffs and they were dangerous. It didn't feel dangerous tonight. The Toronto Maple Leafs didn't feel dangerous tonight. The Bruins were far from dangerous, but the Leafs, I felt in those series, were always dangerous. They, yeah. they always, it was Mitch Martin. Like it just felt, there wasn't really much of a show tonight. It, it was more a product of the Bruins just giving it up themselves. Uh, and we haven't seen that very much of them, but but it's to be expected. And we'll, uh, yeah. so, so I mean, what 14 2 and 1 coming into this game, exactly. Right? The like, they're and, and their rookie goaltenders 11 1 and 1 in his last 13 games with a 9 right, let's 38. Start there. Let's start there. Was Swayman nervous in this game, in your opinion? We I think we he marked was. His, yeah, okay. I think he well, was. How could you tell 
was it was it by the puck touches that we that we marked again early on in the game? Do you think he was nervous and that was an indicator of it? Yes. Yes. The 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 first three times he touched the puck in the first minute and three seconds of the game was bad. And, mm-hmm. and just routine plays where he gets out, moves the puck, feels confident. I, I don't think he felt that. It was one of the the few times we've seen. And we he was like that against Pittsburgh on February 8th when he came back. Yep. I, I thought he was yep. a little like that then. Uh, he... He, he wasn't against Tampa. I, I kind of expected that a little bit against Tampa last week. Again, these are big spots. And for rookie goaltenders, guys playing for the first time against an Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner, you build it up in your head all day long a little bit more. And and you know it's at home and, and he's got family in town. So you have that added thing. And, and it's a Toronto Maple Leaf. So... I, I thought he was nervous. Uh, this time he wasn't able to to get through it. And and he was also due for a, a shitty game. He really was. Like, the, this was coming. And, and he's gotten away with it because the Ds played really well on a few of the nights. It was it was one of those perfect storm nights that, that hasn't happened where he wow. hasn't been great some nights, but the Ds been great. Well, tonight it was both of them. And yeah, uh, he took it on the chin for 40 minutes. So I thought the goal that really was indicative of his offness. There were two of them, the Riley goal, the one where um, Nylander and Tavares bring it in and, and Riley just is at the side of the net. And he, you said, we said he was slow to get over there, react to it. Uh, the Kerfoot goal was, I mean, look, he beat him with a good move on a breakaway, but I also thought then the Matthews goal, I guess just the rebounds, he just wasn't controlling them. And it was a power play. I get it. And Matthews is freaking awesome. Man, does he look big. He's matured, right? I mean, he has he is a premier. Um, I mean, he is the premier, you could argue, premier scorer in the National Hockey League. He's Matt like. Sundin now. Yeah. He's yeah. Matt Sundin now, right? He's like got he's, a receding hairline, too, already. He could he, end up being like does. that. It's not he's that gonna, I can talk. I mean, he's going to eat that one for sure. That's not going to go his way. But not not everything can go that guy's way. He's got everything yeah. else going for him. He but he, he's, he's a monster out there. He it's is. It's getting easy. He still doesn't have Patrice Bergeron defensive skills yet. Uh, yeah. But but he's he's going to be awesome in 10 years. It's going to be fun. Oh, yeah. Um, well, there, were, yes. there were two goals. But just to your point, though, let's, let's just back to Swayman real quick. He makes a save on that breakaway. He's made that save eight out of ten times in the last mm-hmm. two months on Kerfoot. It wasn't that great of a move. He got nervous again. He got early. He got ahead of it. He hasn't been ahead of a lot of things in the last two months. He got ahead of Kerfoot. Riley is not ready. Riley didn't make the read. He didn't get back to his post quickly. It looked awkward. It looked weird. It's one to one at the end of the period if he makes those two saves. Right. And and yeah. and then all the other stuff doesn't happen. Just that's how that the goalie thing and the margin and the thin line that you're always on. That's how it works. Because again, he's made those saves, and they're not exceptional saves. They're just a couple extra ones. Yeah. You mentioned uh, it could have been one one, but instead it's it's three to one. Uh, the Bruins then get an opportunity on a power play in the second period and. Man, oh man! Early, what about five, six minutes in? It went, and it was no good. I mean, the power was no good. The Toronto Maple Leafs were so aggressive on their PK, and the Leafs have been good on the PK and the PP this year. You have number one power play right now. Remember when Edmonton was like forty percent, forty something percent? <laughs> Everyone was like, "Oh my god!" And meanwhile, now, I mean, Toronto's at twenty nine point something coming in. It, it was good, uh, but anyways, their PK was really good. They never gave the Bruins an inch. Never there. They snuffed them out. They 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 went to the walls. I mean, aggressively. And the Bruins, they had. A, I mean, they you know, I'm, I'm you know, they had a what one or two chances, but not scoring, and then not being able to get anything together. I kind of felt like, even though it was just three one, then I kind of felt like I'm like I don't think they have it, Razor. I don't think they have it in this game. Um, anyway, so listen, um, this this Bruins team, they. It seemed like, I have an old saying, right? If you're going to be sick, be really sick. 
I kind of feel like that's how it was for the Bruins. A few guys played pretty well. I, Lindholm wasn't he wasn't bad, right? He wasn't bad. He had some nice plays. He wasn't bad. I mean, he wasn't from the same Lindholm from the other night, but he wasn't bad. I thought Curtis Lazar uh, was good again. Uh, Charlie McAvoy, you know, did his job. Anybody else jump out at you as, as pretty good in this game? I mean, it's slim pickings. I no, guess. it is, but I thought Hall was good. I mean, he scored a goal. He drove wide, similar to Nylander. He, I mean, he blew by the defense, went in, scored a goalie interference goal that they made up. And uh, so I, yeah. I, and I liked it, even the fact that he was getting hit from behind. He was yelling at the refs. Like he was, he was, he was engaged. He was engaged in a big way. David scored his goal, but he hit two posts. And I mean, he was, he was out there doing the, the second line was good as well. Third line could have used more from them, I suppose. Um, you know, that's what they they have the matchup. I, I yeah. think it, again, you couldn't even get that out of the game. That's, that's the unfortunate part too, where you don't even, because it turns six, one, three, one, six, one, you don't really get a sense of who's playing against who. Cause we were doing that right away, right? Like right. first shift, we're like, all right, let, let's see who's matching up. Who's Bruce playing? Who's, but, but then you get to the third period and you're, you're just looking at Sheldon Keefe putting his fourth line over the boards just to make sure that Frederick doesn't go after somebody like that. That's what we ended up dealing with at that game. But a little disappointing in that too, because you don't really get a sense of, who actually played a good game um, yeah. and, and well, who has the matchup advantage. Yeah, I mean, nobody really ended up being great, but you mentioned a few good players. Now, there were some players that weren't so good. Brandon Carlo was one. No, oh, the enemy number one. Him and, they, the, Again, or you, the D were bad, right? All three of them in particular. Yeah, individually. Carlo, Clifton, and Matt Grizzlick, all three of them struggled. They, they, they all struggled. And I got to think that one, if not two, we, I mean, we know this because Bruce said after the game, changes will be made. There have to be to the lineup. I, I got to think two guys come out on the back end. I mean, you've got Riley and Josh Brown sitting out there. Is this the time to get Riley back in after being a healthy scratch the last couple of games? He can play left side or right side. Remember that too. But I, I would think you've got to put in Brown soon. I mean, he'll get another practice on Wednesday. He's had two, I think, already. Don't you got to see what you have in him? You do. You do. Uh, I, and, but I also have to think Riley's got to go back in there. I mean. Um, so you can't put, can't you put two of them in? I don't know. That that That's a dilemma. And that's why Bruce Cassidy makes as much money as he does because you have to decide that. Because it, I, I don't. My thing is, I don't see you taking Forbert out because I don't think he was bad tonight, and he no. serves the purpose of that penalty kill situation. He didn't. It wasn't him. So we're talking about Carlo Grizzlick and, and Clifton. Clifton. Are we taking two of those guys out? Because I don't think that's fair. I, I, it always bothers me when you take someone out who doesn't deserve it, like a Forbert in this situation. I'd agree. That, I'd agree that, with you. But I also think you need to get Paul and Riley in. So so that's the decision that needs to be made because you don't want Paul going too long. I guess Brown. that's really enough. Yeah. But you – Brown. Brown, sorry. I keep saying Paul. To get, I, I know he went to Tampa. Same Ottawa yeah. Senators. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. So sorry. <laughs> Brown, thank you. Paul Brown, uh, former same, football player. Same boring <laughs> names that played in Belleville. I saw them yeah. play for the Senators in Belleville. You got to get Brown in. Um, but Riley shouldn't be passed over either because Riley's a good NHL hockey player. Yeah. Well, I think the first guy to go in would be Riley. Yes. For Clifton. Yep. Now the choice would be if you take out either Carlo or... It's a message. Rich do you want to do you want to send messages at this time of year? Right. How do you want to manage your lineup in that regard? And that's a precarious or dicey proposition. Mm -hmm. um, the easy one to take out would be Forbert, and yes. you just slide a lefty and a righty in for that third pair. And I think I could end, see that happening. And where they say, "Look, Forbes, nothing bad. We're we're, we're putting in these two guys and." 
yeah, maybe you look to Riley uh, to uh, Brown as you know you know he's going to be a penalty killer. You give him that that opportunity there. I, I'm I I'm with you. I mean, could I could you see Grizzly coming? Out? Yeah, I mean, you got you had Carlo who really struggled, but he's looked as one of the leaders on this team. He wears an A somewhat regularly. Mm-hmm. So I'm curious to see uh, what happens in that. Uh, situation um i want to quickly talk about the uh just a little bit about the officiating in the game just from a you know player perspective vibe perspective just a couple of other things but before we get to that let's take a moment and uh recognize uh, fazenda coffee fazendacoffee.com uh the local roaster boston specialty coffee roaster out of denham uh, is fantastic. And if you go to check out, use the code morning brew, you'll get 15% off your order and, uh, go check out all of their different blends that they have. Uh, believe, believe I opened up a Costa Rican, uh, that, uh, because I, you know, I like the medium dark stuff. I, I do always have, and, uh, I'm going to be using some of that coming up. I think that's what the one that we opened up this morning. Today was one of those long days where, geez, I can't remember the start to finish. It's like forever. <laughs> but uh, go check out fazendacoffee.com. Again, use the code uh, Morning Brew there. And by the way, the other night out to dinner with uh, the much better half with Vic and uh, in a new place in our town in the Newton area, uh, Bluebird and bar and grill and all of a sudden Vic said hey take a look in the corner they had a fazenda coffee uh brew and and it was you know branded there and i said oh there you go fazenda so fazendas right here at uh, the bluebird uh, bar and grill uh check that out in newton so fazenda I'm coffee. you got out man I don't yeah know you know that trying is. to my wife is yelling at me right now like we gotta really well you know what we're going out friday night so if you want it, can you get a sitter? Well, that's the yeah. issue. We're in we're in sitter purgatory right now. We got sister in laws and parent like we need like a legit sitter, but no one's home yet from college, mm-hmm. and it's like no. I'd, I'd offer Mace is close. Brother. Like my guy's close, but not there. The other uh, two are young. Yeah. Okay. Well, if something changes, we're gonna go out Friday night. Okay. So yeah. if you want to come, yeah. join. Yeah. Do that. How's that? We're setting up stuff there right now. This is a weird podcast right now. Um, uh, also, real quick, let's uh, recognize, let's remind you about Max Pro, Max Pro, Max Pro Hockey with Max Grachev. Um, great skills training, uh, skills development. Go to maxprohockey.com. Check out all the different programs, all the different summer camps uh, that they have. And uh, if you have a child playing hockey, they will have a blast. They will not... I mean, they will. You will not find a better camp out there. And again, in season, check out their player development programs in season uh, to uh, amend or addendum uh, to to be an add on to uh, everything else your player is doing. Go to maxprohockey.com. All right, um, officiating in this game did not like it. By no means the reason, Razor, that this team, the Bruins, lost the game, but. I thought the officiating was as, uh, and you know me, just like you like supporting the goalies, I'll support the officials more often than not. But holy smokes, I thought that they had no clue about this game. No, they had no vibe check on this game. Did you agree? Yeah, they had no idea. And and to to prove the the unbiased Bruins slant was was the Charlie Coyle uh, holding the stick. But also giving Justin Hall when he gets hit in the face with a slapper, uh, a hooking call. How do how yeah. do you have holding the stick and hooking at the same time? I mean, Charlie Coyle's got the stick underneath his arm, right? Pulls him down. That's how he's down on the ground in front of his goaltender, getting hit in the head with a shot because the stick's getting held. Uh, and, and then the Charlie McAvoy down at the they they were they were nervous as well. That's that was my sense is they were younger guys that were nervous in a big spot, similar to to maybe the goaltender. Um, they were uh, and we we said it on off air when we were sitting next to each other. The Craig Smith that set up the four on four goal from from Riley was the, the With, perfect indicator. Like they let those guys play. There's 
You're, that you're was putting Craig Smith has been in the league for 15 years, and you're calling a four-on-four four off the faceoff before the puck was dropped on him. Like, it's a joke. Yeah, actually, that was, uh, yeah, against uh, Bunting, right? Bunting yeah. was the player. So there, there's, they're, they're, they're tussling, and that's all it is, or jostling at the faceoff. They give him a warning or whatever. They separate him. And then right at the faceoff, they each, they each put the stick in between each other's legs, and they take each other down. And that was actually Francois Saint Laurent, who was more of a veteran ref. The other ref, Kendrick Nicholson, is much younger. Um, Saint Laurent calls a a, a coincidental minors. That is not managing the game. There, you tell there was no punch, there was no slap, there was no slash. You tell them to get their asses up and get in the play. That's it. Like you know, cut the crap. If you if you jostle the face off again, then we'll take you off. But I don't know. I, I there was a lot of. Per- curious calls in this one no there was and again if if i'm a guy like craig smith who's played as many games as he had in this league you're the only way you're getting taken off coincidentally is punches in the face like almost a fight but but not a fight almost uh, or a cross check slash or high stick slash high stick cross check it's not off so yes they the nhl is an issue they, they do. They flat out have an issue. They've already addressed it. They've talked about it. They're at the GM meetings right now where they need to – the game's really fast, but there's also some things where they have to start letting things go. And and those are the situations. And it, it's it's very easy to get on the refs, but it's also very easy for them to learn the game a little bit better and, and recognize situations like that don't call for it. Yeah, they're they're – we can do a, a show one day and, and maybe, you know what? I'm good buddies with Timmy Peel. I don't know if you are too or not. Uh, oh, it, Peel, it, yeah, he's, he's ready for you. He'll come on for he, sure. Oh my God. I'm, I'm absolutely. Get yeah. He's ready. He's I've, I've yelled at Tim Peel as much as anybody in the, in, in, in the league, but, but we, we love each other, Ontario yeah. guys. But yeah, so, I've told Timmy to go F himself many times. Yeah, well, good. You can tell him on the show, too. And he doesn't care. He gets he it. Care. That was the whole point. He got it the whole time. Right. Like, those guys, you get it. Like, they get it. We're all wired. We're literally fighting for our lives, like, trying to put food on the table. Like, those guys, that's that's the right. what I feel like has been lost with some of so, these guys. Like, the idea of being a ref is, is a lot of it's to be a punching bag. And, and you just deal with it. And you hate every team. You don't like any right. teams. You just hate everybody. Right. You base your like on certain teams on how well you get taken care of in the locker room, what kind of post-game foods there, you know, the amenities, yep. uh, how well they take care of you and, and the cities that you're in, because you're uh, you know, you're a vagabond. You're you're going, you're you've got no home games basically, you know what I mean? Yeah. But you know, let's get Timmy out. We'll do a special brew with Timmy. And uh and he'll he'll be great. We'll we'll talk to him again. If anybody's out there saying, Jesus Christ, you idiot, you're saying, no, the Bruins lost this game because they completely mismanaged pucks and they deserved what they got and they didn't have their skating legs. I'm just talking about uh, some of the things that the the no goal that ended up being a goal, like it just, it it just, anyway, it didn't look good. It didn't feel good in that perspective too. A couple of numbers that jump out to me, Razor, 12 giveaways by the Bruins and giveaways, takeaways are always, I rarely look at them on this NHL stat sheet, if only because, you know, they don't always seem to make sense. But if you look at this, the Bruins had 12 giveaways and the Leafs had eight takeaways. So 20 total opportunities that ended up being for the Leafs. And you know what? The Leafs took advantage of it. Again, the much better team, the much more engaged team in this game. Um, I want to ask you one other thing. Um, we th- I thought that Swayman maybe would have been pulled at 4-1 if he gave up another goal at breakaway goal. Remember the break the one that he saved. Yeah. The one that the one that he the breakaway that he saved. Um and then they kept him in because it was late in the period and then they made the change. Would you have been all right if he kept Swayman in when he was down 6-1 and just said, you know, just go for it, meaning take this one for the team and Olmark's going to come back on Thursday. So he was I, I no, I was okay with him taking. So I talked with uh, Dale and I. Did, I four one, he's uh-huh. eating it, hundred yeah. percent. He's eating it. 
um, and, and you're sitting there. The issue is, is when you get to 6-1 in the second period, it, it's time to go. And I think Bruce wanted to pull him at five with four minutes left. And one of the guys, like he looked down on the bench and told like, cause I looked right away. Cause I knew it was yep. coming. He looked like Linus, you're going in. But I think someone said, well, listen, there's four minutes left in the second. We're not pulling. You know, you'd never pull a guy at home if you don't have to until right. the end of the period, until it got really out of hand. So, no, it was a good pull at six. Six is kind of the number through two periods. Maybe even, even at five, I would have taken him out, but okay. only after the second period, um, only because the third period can get out of control and you don't want to – because it – what also happens, right? If you if you put him back in for the third period, he has to stay in the entire third period. There was one time in my career where, and it was a joke. I was in Dallas, and Crawford, Mark Crawford, left Kari Lettinen in at six to one or five to one after second period, and then they pumped two quick ones in on him on the road, and I had to go in with seven minutes left in the third period. Oh. That's a joke. <laughs> Yeah, but that's the the that's so that's what happens if you leave Swayman in at that point at six. A lot of times mm -hmm. when it gets to eight, nine, one, and the guys eat those eight goal games, it's they get left in four right. one at the end of the third. I would have left yeah. Swayman in. Okay, but he could have ate four in the third, and then it gets really ugly. But the four or five goals is kind of the the limit. I would have he wanted to keep Swayman in from my perspective. He wanted to keep him in. And have mm -hmm. him fight through this adversity a little bit, but when it gets to six, you got to take him out. Okay, yeah. I mean, I didn't mind it, and you give Lamar gets more work, and he, I'd be shocked if he doesn't start on Thursday. Yeah, I'd be I'd be surprised against me too. Thursday. I think you got to let him let him have his leash now. No, yeah, he's see, been he's well, been a good soldier the next the last month. Yeah. Well, let's hope that the Bruins have a nice bounce back effort. Uh, they should. Now, uh, New Jersey opens the game up. Jack Hughes playing well. Jesper Bratt playing well. They've got some other guys going, Dawson Mercer, et cetera. But this is a game, if they play the right way, the Bruins uh, should win. They did not win on Tuesday night. In fact, they got beat pretty good, even though the final score is 6 4. A couple of late goals make it seem a little closer than it was. I guess. Taking the half class full approach, you know, shit. I mean, you played like crud and very lack of kind of emotional type of game, and yet you're still in it, I guess. You find a way to stay in it somewhat, even though they really weren't. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, no, but, I, I agree. I, I agree with that in a big way. And they weren't in it. They weren't really like you can't say all oh, those last two goals, but. But right. they can find a way to score four goals on it. Like it wasn't, it wasn't a domination. We've seen them get dominated by Carolina. That that those were domination games where it was doors blown off. Yeah. This one didn't. This was one of those ones where nothing went right. So right. that's that's well, the positive, I guess. All right, let's see how they respond to it. They got two more games at home Thursday against New Jersey. We will have a morning brew for you after that game. And then Saturday at home against Columbus. All right, Razor, good stuff. Get some rest. I'll try and do the same, see if I can sleep a teeny bit. And uh, RC, the man doing all the magic behind the scenes, he'll, he'll get this up and get this up. Thank you to uh, Berkshire Bank for being our presenting sponsor. And also, again, FazendaCoffee.com and MaxProHockey.com. Go check out both of, both of those as well. We appreciate their support greatly. Everybody have a wonderful Wednesday and Thursday. We'll talk to you after Thursday night's game against the New Jersey Devils. In the meantime, have a wonderful day and try, please try to enjoy that coffee.